Hello, this is David Mandel once again uh, with uh, CIS 240L Linux Systems Administration. And um, we're starting week five. So in week five, the, as, long, as far as the preliminary materials, the first thing I want to talk about is, like normal, our good friend Caligator, Portland's uh, event calendar. So let's look at calendar, Caligator just briefly. Um, events for this week, um, that is the week I make the video, um, are something called Splash 2011, um, website planning for with a PT, PDX uh, Tech for Good. I don't know much about that, but that sounds like a great event to me, and it's probably very open source like. Uh, one event of a similar nature that I do know more about is something called crisis camp. Uh, crisis camps are very much like bar camps or recent changes camps, only they're oriented towards crisis planning. Like um, the first crisis camps I'm aware of happened just after Hurricane uh, Katrina in an effort to try and help people there. and. Um, uh, the me results were mixed because they had very little experience, a lot of goodwill, and not much experience. But uh, that laid the groundwork for later crisis camps. Um, and um, later ones were much more successful as they got more feel for what they were doing. Um, crisis Camp Haiti, which followed the Haiti earthquake, was very successful in doing things like um, using open street maps to first look at the streets and the maps of the system before the earthquake occurred, and then looking at satellite imagery that you could overlay on top of that and looking at what things looked like after the earthquake and using uh, trying to use the difference or compare the two sets of maps to uh, come up with paths that emergency vehicles and stuff could wind through the debris and get to uh, uh, various places to help people. And as I understand, it was quite successful. They've had crisis camps on um, uh, following the Japan earthquake. Um, it, it, these are becoming a routine thing now. And as they're more, um, uh, as they get more experience, they get to be more and more beneficial. And pretty much anybody can join in those. Um, it's a great place to get experience. Um, other events happening are, um, well, here's an event here on Wednesday that I think I'll try to go to on Wednesday evening, PDX Open Source GIS meeting. Um, for uh, GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems. There's a great deal of open source GIS done uh, nowadays, and such as OpenStreetMaps, uh, QGIS, uh, GRASS, um, um, OpenMap, um, oh, and the University of Minnesota Map Server, uh, just to mention a few major products that are based on uh, open source GIS. That should be a good meeting, um, and uh, so on. So going back to our um, outline here. Um, I should mention that quiz two is now open and ready for you to take that. And it closes on Sunday. Quiz two covers chapters um, four and five of the textbook. And um, uh, it's an objective test made up uh, in part of uh, true and false questions and in part uh, of um, multiple choice. Take it. Have fun. Um, I'm also experimenting with new ways to get feedback back to you quicker on these exams. And um, we'll see how it works after this one. Um, next thing is I should discuss Lab 6. Lab 6 um, will be on shell scripting. In fact, it is on shell scripting. It's been written, and it's up on your website right now. And um, it's a little bit um, 
early in that it's um, in that we're doing chapter six tonight, and um, um, shell scripting doesn't come up until chapter seven. But you've already had shell scripting in your Unix class. And um, or you can read ahead into chapter seven. And the people that came to the lecture really asked me to move shell scripting up so we could do a little more shell scripting. Shell scripting is very, very important. Every Linux or Unix sysadmin should be able to do some shell scripting. It is, it's just a crucial tool for uh, Linux and Unix systems administrators. Um, you have gotten some experience with this in your Unix class if you took your Unix, it took a Unix class, and um, but as they say, you know, you um, what is it? The saying is, um, y um, you learn algebra as you take trigonometry. You learn trigonometry as you take calculus. You learn calculus as you do differential equations. So. Uh, in light of that, we will be doing quite a lot of, or well, a certain amount of shell scripting. I'm hoping to give two labs, or I'm hoping to give three labs on shell scripting, but there will be at least two labs on shell scripting, uh, starting with this lab, lab six. OK, before I end this section, I will just say a couple other things. Um, I'm going to throw out a couple books that I think are cool from an open source point of view. The first book I want to talk about, just, you know, I know people don't have much time for reading and whatnot. Um, that's one of the advantages I have, is I do have a bit more time for reading for pleasure. But I did want to discuss a couple books anyway. Um, and um, the first one I want to discuss is a book called uh, The Victorian Internet by Tom Standage. Uh, this is a cool book, and um, what it is about is the growth of the telegraph system in the 19th century, and just how quickly it took over the con country, um, or the world, actually, and how people were trying to make big companies out of it. Uh, uh, people were starting teeny tiny companies of one and two people in their garage, and suddenly trying to make them into mega companies, sort of like Apple Computer uh, did, or, um, or Microsoft, or um, uh, Oracle, or 50 other companies that we know today. Um, and he just gives a feel for the growth of the telegraph that feels so much like what I remember and I saw with the growth of the computer industry around 2000 when um, the growth of the dot coms and the internet and when everybody was trying to, you know, in the early 1990s, all of us were trying to start our own ISP, me included. Uh, didn't go anywhere. but uh, um, and, um, and some of them took off and went big. And, um, and, uh, and then they got gobbled up by ones that got bigger and bigger and bigger and, and so on. Well, this is um, apparently, almost the same thing happened with the growth with the growth of the telegraph, and if this is just a fun book to read. Um, the other book that I might talk about just a little bit is a book that I've read a while back called "Dumbing Us Down" by um, uh, John Taylor Gatto. And um, he was a grade school teacher. He's a critic of the American education system. But what strikes me about the book from an open source point of view is how much emphasis he puts on the idea that uh, learning and education does not come just from school. And, um, and it, it reminds me of how much the open source world has depended on on um, collaborative education done through things like user groups and um, uh, uh, volunteer activities and open books that people post on the internet and um, things of that type. And um, so I also think that's good read. And um, that's everything I have to say in terms of preliminary topics. And I will start a new video, which will actually start talking about the subject matter in chapter 6. Thank you. Bye-bye.